we have a thing where I say, okay, let's leave, um, let's leave work in the office and uh, not bring it home. She won't do that at all. <laughs> Can somebody smell that glass? <laughs> <laughs> 
Not on Twitter, I don't know. Well, Jared should have seen it, I think. I, I don't, I don't check my Twitter super often. I, I can go back and check it. Save us the trouble, what? It was one with Rick Pants on. <laughs> there was the one where he came out and was like, did he? Huh? I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it was Photoshop? You know, uh, those are things that I'm, I'm going to make sure and, and show JJ because I want her to learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Alright, that's fair. And as far as the cowboy hat goes, I, I mean, the last time I checked, it's been Jared's wallpaper on his iPhone. Alright. Alright, okay, that's officially embarrassing. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. wasn't so serious because I have this bullshit question I'm asking everyone actually. <laughs> it's um, about the covers of the Supernatural books. Um, and the question I asked everyone else was what they would look like if they were on these covers. Oh, the fake, the Carver Edlund covers. Yeah. What? The Carver Edlund covers. Yes, exactly. Those. Oh, yeah. But since you're already on the covers, um, with the long flowing hair and the beautiful abs, I was wondering um, if you could put any character on the covers, uh, what would you make them look like and pose like? I'd have Richard Spade in his porn stash. <laughs> he also looks damn fine in a gym t shirt. You. Uh, he would have left his shirt on too. 
Don't ever ask me to think about that. <laughs> um, I think these guys were lucky, I think, at a very early age, they actually knew what they wanted to do um, and, and got into this business uh, because they really loved it and cared about it and, and, and saw their future. You know, when I was 19, part of my friend, I don't know what a shitter wearing my watch. Um, but, uh, not, not a lot of conventions. To um, you know, these guys had a really clear thing of what they wanted to do, and they, they went after it, and they both succeeded. So I would, I'm just guessing that if they were saying, looking back and saying, what do I want to do at 19, and where do I see my life going, they probably would have picked right where they are. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Well,
Uh, yeah, look, I, I, I've been very, very honored and, and, uh, and thankful that, that, that these, uh, these guys have given me uh, the opportunity to, to direct as many as I have. Uh, you know, I look forward to the opportunity to, to have more of a future, and if that, uh, if that includes a different show, I, I would be more than thrilled. So, so we'll see. Um, Jared? Uh, so we all geek out over Supernatural. Is there something you really geek out over? There probably is. <laughs> um, I geek out over, I do geek out over, uh, over the program. Uh, we got some doubts <laughs> It turns out the, uh, I think Jen was pregnant at the time, too. Yes, she was. Uh, we got backstage tickets to uh, Pro Jam, and they were in Vancouver like two years ago. And we're walking, the, the publicist, I guess, is fan of the show. I'm like, listen, if the boys are want to come by, hang out in the room, whatever, uh, we'll give them a beer and let them hang out. It's like, cool, cool, okay, cool. And then uh, we walked in, and, and uh, Stone Dawson was there. And all of a sudden, I could feel Jen kind of like, how out? You're hurting. You're hurting. Like, what? She's like, you're squeezing the shit out of him. I'm like, oh, sorry, man. I got some gossip right there. And then my grades walk by. I totally. I mean, I grew up the grunge scene. And I think uh, Pearl Jam, any better specifically. Uh, just, a, just a big, big fan. He's done so much for charity. He fanned out. I he fanned out to the point where I walk up to him and I'm like, you're embarrassing. <laughs> walk it up. <laughs> and I kind of went like, Oh man, I was hoping to react like that. <laughs> there was another moment, Sebastian. <laughs> I didn't fan out. I didn't fan girl out of Sebastian, but it was just talking about this kind of fun. Uh, talking about like the oh man, I was hoping to react like that. There was a part where Sebastian was all. This was the first mistake. It was the first mistake. Oh, he's painting the window with the blood and the bowl, and I'm standing there, and the couch is like right there, and the bowl is there, and he's he finished. And he finishes painting the sigil and puts the bowl down. And the bowl is on the back of the couch, this far away from me. It's like over there, and the bowl starts kind of like tipping. Like he puts it, he does this, and then he puts the bowl down. And he doesn't look at the bowl, and the scene's going. But I can see the bowl tipping. And instead of going like <clears throat> just riding the bowl, I kind of go. <laughs> the bowl falls, blood, blood everywhere, all over the couch, and I'm I'm standing behind him, and I look at him like. What was that? <laughs> All he had to do was do this. <laughs> and hold it, but no, he sees it go, it's going, it's like slow motion, and then, and then it's beyond the point of and he's like, ah! <laughs> And I look at him like, why did you not catch that? He's like, I don't know, I always hooked up and react like that. <laughs> uh, you had a question for Bob? Um, what was the most challenging story arc that you worked on in Supernatural? Um, I think year. I think it was challenging, and from what I can get of uh, fan reaction, I, I think the whole uh, thing with the Leviathans um, was hard for us. We, we had a really great ending uh, the year before, and Dean was stuck in purgatory, and we thought that that was really cool, um, and then when we got into the room said, okay, well, what, what now would we do? And bringing that storyline was probably the, the toughest one we had. It, did, it didn't feel in the moment like a natural progression. We were happy with a lot of that season, but I don't think any of us who were involved in it would have said, well, it's our best season. Um, so sometimes you write yourself into a corner and it's a little tough to get out of it. So that, that was the most challenging. I mean, I, I, I like the year, but um, I, I certainly, I think I, I like last year a lot better, and I think what we're doing this year is really exciting. Uh, the thing about Jared, oh, thank you. The thing about Jared is, when we're talking about something as silly as the bowl tipping, is that whenever we have uh, a scene which um, there has to be some physicality on Jared's part, we always make sure to tell the guys that build the set, you've got to really brace this hard, you've got to build it to it, because he can break anything. Jared, yeah, he does. Yeah, Jared slammed that door and the door flies off. It's hinges and... Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> the bowl is scary, right? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Thank you, Bob. That's great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hello. Um, I'm sort of looking for a future to go into acting. Oh, I've heard around... <laughs> I've heard around the internet or something. I've heard places that uh, 
Jensen in the past has been quite a shy actor. So I was just sort of wondering if you could give some advice or to tell me how you sort of got through that. Um, I, don't, I don't know that I was a shy actor. Um, I think that uh, for the longest time I was a quite observant actor. Uh, I, would, I would get on set and I would, I would just try to be a sponge and learn from the people who I thought could teach me stuff. And, you know, if that came across as me being kind of absurd, maybe it was, but it was, you know, it's, it's one of those things where if I'm talking, and I'm not learning. So, I'll just be quiet and I'll just kind of learn as much as I can. And, and you know, of course now I know everything, so I don't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I think that definitely the first, you know, the first five to ten years of, of being a professional actor, I was, I was still learning a ton, and I think just if you shut up and learn is, is some, some advice that uh, somebody gave me early on, and I, I took it. So, yeah. Woo! Yeah. so me and my best friend were discussing um, your. We see that every time you guys sold one of the moments in the show, that he has the silver lighter, he throws it into the, <laughs> the body, and I'm just wondering, it always looks like. I, uh, um, Costco. Uh, <laughs> we buy in bulk. Uh, no, actually, if you look at the last several years, the last several seasons, we, we have been using matchbooks. Uh, we take, I, it's two, two matchbooks, and I actually like the whole matchbook and throw it in there. Uh, because, because we ran out of woods of us. No, we, I, I think there was, We've had a few suppose in the past, but um, we've stopped throwing them in because you're right. <laughs> that would, wouldn't make sense. <laughs> All right, Cass, I'm, I'm coming on stage now because I know there's some, uh, there's some auctioning things to be done. Yeah, we there's talked to you guys. We're gonna, to, to kind of lead into it, one of the things we've, uh, we have a lot of members of the, of the crew and production staff here. And one of the things we always talk about, for us, we, we see you guys almost a dozen times Year, you know, so it's, it's one Some of you. Some of you. Lots of you. Uh, but one more that we get in a room with hundreds of, of people who are really passionate about the show uh, many times a year, and we kind of explain that one of the most amazing things, I'll take it back, the most amazing thing is how you guys have been together, not only to be so supportive to the show, and to myself and Jensen as actors, and Richard, Rob, and a bunch, and the producers and the writers, but also to causes that um, benefit people who aren't as lucky as we all are. Um, that having been said, we obviously always uh, do a charity auction of sorts through creation, and this year we, we uh, Bob had an idea, and he wanted to auction some stuff off the charity. Um, we told him there are no more uh, supportive people than you bunch um, to make sure that Supernatural does good work, so I'll let kind of Bob take from here and he can explain what's going on. Uh, my wife uh, and I, and her, she's on the board of directors of this uh, nonprofit, and it's called Death Penalty Focus. Uh, politically, some of you may not agree with this, but basically it's an anti death penalty uh, group that uh, works. Somebody got executed that didn't do the crime, and one death is uh, too many. Uh, so that's the group that it's for. Um, what we're auctioning off is this book. Uh, every year, two of these actually. Uh, every year, Jerry Wine, our uh, production designer, makes this beautiful coffee table book um, as sort of a, a thank you gift for the actors and producers. Um, it's really wonderful. It's, 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 it's not available anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 gifts he makes for 